Welcome again friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about Ethidium bromide, which is also known as ETBR. ETBR. Ethidium bromide or bromidine. Uh, you can also say that. Ethidium bromide is a fluorescent molecule which usually is vastly used in molecular biology techniques during the agarose gel electrophoresis to stain the gel. I mean, not actually staining the gel, to get the position of the DNA, right? To get the position of the DNA in the gel, we can see this. I mean, after running the gel, ethidium bromide is a molecule which can bind with the DNA properly. It's an intercalating agent. It's an intercalating agent. Intercalating agent means they bind with the DNA base pairs, right? So, if I draw the DNA structure here, like this, it's not a, it's an arbitrary drawing. But if I, if I draw the structure properly, there are bases in the middle, right? And this intercalating agent means this intercalating agent will bind in between the base pairs. So, the hydrogen bonding base pairs out there, they will bind to this base pair segments. As you know that here are the minor grooves and major groups, minor groove and major groove that are present in both the ends. And in between there are the hydrogen bonds, right, one after another, A with T, G with C. Now here this intercalating agents always pair in between those hydrogen bonds. Let us say A with T, G with C, again let us say, say A, something like that. And this ethidium bromide is going to bind in between this pairing. This is the function of intercalating agent. They bind in between the hydrogen bonding. They are called base stacking, right? The interaction between this base pairing in between is called the base stacking interaction. And intercalating agent like ETBR are bound with those base stacking regions, okay? Let me erase this stuff here. After loading the gel and running the DNA agarose gel, so we know that in the gel, we will see the position of those DNA, like that. So how could you visualize where the DNA is exactly present because DNA does not have its own color or something like that. But before running the agarose gel, we add this ethidium bromide. So we know that ethidium bromide will bind with the DNA because it is an intercalating agent. Now after this process is done. When we expose this whole agarose gel to UV light, according to the rule of fluorescence, ethidium bromide receives UV light, get excited and emit orange color. So, after this process is done, after the uh, agarose gel electrophoresis is done, we place this gel in front of a UV light, right? And then that UV light excites all those ethidium bromide molecules that are present in the DNA. And normally, the ethidium bromide gets excited from 210 to 285 nanometer of wavelength and that is the wavelength of UV light. So, UV light excites ETBR, if I write here, it excites ETBR and ETBR start to release that orange fluorescence at 650 nanometer wavelength, okay. This is the mode of fluorescence by ETBR. This is one property, it is fluorescence. Exposed to UV provides orange coloration, orange, orange fluorescence. This is one property. Second property, it can bind with DNA. This is another very important property that I have told you. So, we combine these two properties and we can visualize the DNA, the presence of the DNA in the agarose gel after the gel electrophoresis is done. So, when you expose it to the UV ray, so we will see these orange bands. That means obviously we know the DNA is present in those locations. It looks beautiful in front of the UV. Though it is open, it is not good. That is the thing. Now, the question is how this ethidium bromide provides us that fluorescence. 
I'm not going to talk about the details of chemistry about the fluorescence, but again, unlike I mean, like all the other uh, type of fluorescence molecules, this is also having an aromatic chain, right? So this is we can simply term is it's a heterocyclic, heterocyclic aromatic compound. Hetero means multi cyclic, so multiple cycles are there, and aromatic rings are present. And this aromatic rings uh, along with uh, attached with one another, it produces heterocyclic ring. And this heterocyclic ring provides the idea. Now, this heterocyclic ring gets excited very much with this UV radiation and emits this orange fluorescence. Okay. There are certain variations of this heterocyclic aromatic ring in different other type of same kind of fluorescence which gets excited by UV radiation. One of such example is acridine acridine orange because again acridine also gets excited by uv emits orange light acridine orange is another example so these are the different examples this heterocyclic aromatic compounds get excited by uv emits the orange coloration and we can see the presence of this in the agarose gel plate after the agarose electrophoresis is done okay that's about ethidium bromide. But remember, ethidium bromide found to be very dangerous molecule because ethidium bromide is toxic. It is potential carcinogen for us. If it exposed to your skin or your body part in kind of considerable amount of time, like one to two minutes, it may cause certain effects, obviously. So handling ethidium bromide is kind of difficult. So nowadays, we modify this stuff to use other molecules for visualizing the DNA after gel electrophoresis instead of ETBR. So ETBR is a carcinogen, but it depends on the organism which is exposed to ETBR and the time duration, how many times it is being exposed to it or not. Another thing is that this ETBR can also be used against trypanosomiasis disease. But Previously, it was used during 1950s, 60s, we used ETBR against trypanosomiasis to get against those tryponema pallidum, those infections. But in those cases, it found to be that ET ETBR start to rise a lot of and re resistant strains in bacteria. So that's why we also stopped that process. Not a very good guy here, right? But still, nowadays, we still use ETBR in most of the labs here in India to visualize the place of DNA because it's, uh, the expense is less and also it is very easy. Just put a small amount of it while you are preparing the gel mix, I mean the loading uh, mixture for the DNA and then after the process you simply expose to UV, you will get it. And the interesting idea about this ETPR upon binding to the DNA, it becomes 10 times more intense in coloration of orange after we add it to the UV light. So that is another very good thing. So it's 10 times more bright and 10 times more effective after it's added to the DNA to visualize the DNA. Okay. So that's about the ethidium bromide or ETBR. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this and I hope in future you will see all this. Share this video with your friends. Thank you.